So go ahead, Steve. Bosman, Bosman. I have a friend who once visited Bosman. So said a woman who gave us a ride hitchhiking. It can be argued as to how to pronounce what for most of us uh, is our adopted home. But it's undeniable that Oz is, lies in the heart of Bozeman. L. Frank Baum, who introduced Oz to America in the 1900, was a theosophist. Theosophy helped introduce Eastern spiritual teachings to the West. Similar teachings in the West went underground to avoid persecution. One of the ways around that was to hide them in fairy tales. The creators of the Wizard of Oz 1939 movie took Baum's popular fairy tale and made an American myth. Notice these ordinary words that are capitalized. These are anomalies, one of the best ways of pointing to a story behind the story. The movie's creators took Baum's gray Annie M and made her a power force and introduced characters such as Hunk and Hickory and his wind machine. Don't remember a wind machine? That's because the movie we've grown to love was severely edited version yet we have an original script online. Another feature that the creators used to drop hints was the blooper. Secrets can be found in anomalies of images as well as words. After falling into a pig pen, how likely is it that Dorothy's spotless dress was not noticed by any of the movie's creators? These were the best in their field. Also introduced into the movie was the bad guy. If Dorothy was to be a true heroine, she needed a foil. Enter Miss Gulch, riding her mechanical horse and threatening to have Toto, Dorothy's beloved dog, put to death. But Toto escapes from Miss Gulch, and Dorothy takes her little dog and runs away. They meet charlatan Professor Marvel, the Kansas counterpart to the Wizard of Oz. Now, why give the wizard title status. He's only a secondary character in both the book and the movie. Dorothy tries to head back to Annie M and the Gale farm, but a snake-like tornado sweeps the house with Dorothy and Dodo inside. Odd images float past her bedroom window, including a Miss Gulch who morphs into a witch riding a broomstick with a repeated rooster-themed song. The Gale House lands on the Technicolor Place filled with little people called munchkins and Dorothy is given honors by the Lollipop Guild. Now, if there's anyone here in the audience tonight who can tell me what the symbol on that blue shirt is, I'd be mighty thankful. It's been a mystery for 20 years. Dorothy is honored because her house landing killed the munchkins ruler, the Witch of the East. Salmon Rushdie asks, if the munchkins are so unafraid and giggly, was the witch truly wicked? And I wonder, did my classmates always want me to play the wicked witch because of my disposition? Blinda the good witch has strong advice that Dorothy stay tight in those ruby slippers that magically disappeared from the witch's feet and appeared on the girl. Yet only a short while of wearing them and Dorothy is seen back in her black shoes for a split second. Again, was this a mistake that was intentional? A few moments before, Scarecrow and Dorothy enter the woods where they will discover a man made of tin. Why would there be a need to rent these exotic birds from the LA Zoo, insert them here, when the Tin Man scene was one of the last filmed and the movie was way over budget? Tin Man's woods became a dark wood as the group meets the lion. The online script gives us some clues as to why the uh, Tin Man's face is all bumpy, but it doesn't answer why the lion asks, is my nose bleeding, when it was his hand that Dorothy slapped. The foursome reached the edge of the dark woods, all the while repeating a song. Repetition also helps in dropping hints. Before reaching the Emerald City, the crew has to cross the poppy field. A noted anthropologist once stated, America was asleep in the poppy field. Are we? While in the Emerald City, the Wicked Witch Sky writes, surrender Dorothy or die. And before Dorothy and the friends can collect their wishes from the great Oz, he gives them the life-threatening task of bringing back the broomstick of the witch. 
death at every turn. Yikes. Dorothy and her crew cross the haunted forest to get to the witch's castle. The script doesn't explain Scarecrow's horse pistol, but it helps with the lion's huge butterfly net. The wicked witch sends out not only flying monkeys, but also a jitterbug, yet the entire jitterbug dance was cut. Here we have two mysteries. First, the head monkey is given the name Nico in the movie's final credits. And second, one of the most successful weapons that the witch has is the threat of time, yet she destroys the hourglass just moments before she is accidentally liquidated. This is a promotional poster from the release, first release of the 1939 movie. Yet this scene was cut. Hundreds of men dressed like Robin Hood and women in high, as high priestesses sing another rendition of Ding Dong, The Witch is Dead, while Dorothy crosses a rainbow bridge. The same men who decided to cut 20 minutes off the first release movie also wanted to cut the iconic song Somewhere Over the Rainbow. Thank goodness the song remains, as well as those ruby slippers. Here, Glinda directs Dorothy to click her heels together to get home to Auntie M. And Dorothy wakes up in her Kansas bed, the fourth mention of awakening in the movie. So now it's time to ask yourselves, is Oz just an entertaining movie, or is it hiding a deeper meaning? And do we deserve, after 84 years, to have those missing 20 minutes reinserted into a full remake? And here is the link to the online script that I've been referring. Thank you. <laughs>